Increase in number of deaths of Russian soldiers in Ukraine leads to riot against regime in Russia. Ukrainian military expert Pyotr Chernik said that if the losses of the occupying army increase to more than 50 to 60,000 monthly, this will lead to social tension in Russia. There is an important political point. In my opinion, Russians are not capable of a rebellion from below. I don't believe in this and this has never happened in history. The only successful case was the Bolshevik rebellion. However, it was organized by the elites, led by Lenin, for German money, he said on Espresso. According to Chernik, the elites can take advantage of the social tension in the aggressor country to remove the ruler of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, from power. Today, the Russian Federation painlessly mobilizes more than 30 to 32,000 personnel every month. In May, the Defense Forces set a record for the destruction of occupiers, 39,000 personnel. If we reach the figures of 50 to 60,000 destroyed occupiers monthly, then this will really lead to very powerful social tension in Russia. One of the Kremlin's towers can take advantage of this social tension to remove Putin from power. I would like to remind you that such an attempt has already taken place. Prigozhin himself did not provoke it, he was forced to do so, or was motivated by some group, I think, in the FSB, the expert explained. As of the morning of June the 11th, Russia's losses in the war increased to 530,000 people. The ruler of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, admitted that the occupation army is losing 20,000 combat soldiers every month in Ukraine. This figure is close to the number of military personnel who are mobilized for war in the Russian Federation every month. Russian officials are concerned about a slowdown in recruitment ahead of a planned summer 2024 offensive, ISW experts say. In addition, it is unknown whether the Russian Ministry of Defense managed to continue the indicated pace of mobilization. Russia threatens Africans to force them into war against Ukraine. Russia is threatening migrants and foreign students with deportation if they do not agree to go to war against Ukraine, reports Bloomberg. According to officials familiar with the situation, using a tactic first employed by the Wagner Group, Russian officials have increasingly begun threatening not to renew visas for African students and young workers unless they agree to join the army. Moscow is also recruiting convicts from its prisons as some Africans with work visas in Russia have been detained and forced to decide between deportation or fighting. One anonymous official told the media that Russia's practice of sending migrants and students into combat under pressure dates back to the beginning of the war. These troops are suffering particularly high casualty rates as they are increasingly deployed in risky offensive maneuvers to protect more trained units. Africans are not the first foreigners used by the Kremlin to conduct military operations in Ukraine. 
Russians tried to recruit Serbs and Ukrainians living in the occupied territories. Before that, the National Resistance Center reported that Russia had recruited tens of thousands of mercenaries from Africa and Asia for the war in Ukraine. Russians were also bringing mercenaries from Cuba and Nepal to the occupied territory. However, mercenaries from Nepal began to desert the Russian army. In its African strategy, the Kremlin is motivated foremost by a desire to thwart U.S. policy objectives, almost irrespective of their substance. Considering Africa one of Russia's foreign policy priorities, Russian President Vladimir Putin also seeks to create African dependencies on Moscow's military assets and access African resources targeting countries that have fragile governments but are often rich in important raw materials such as oil, gold, diamonds, uranium and manganese. Russian private security companies such as the Wagner Group purport to redress complex local military and terrorism conflicts with which African governments have struggled. They also offer to these governments the ability to conduct counterinsurgency and counterterrorism operations unconstrained by human rights responsibilities, unlike the United States allowing African governments to be as brutish in their military efforts as they like. In turn, Russia seeks payment in concessions for natural resources, substantial commercial contracts, or access to strategic locations such as air bases or ports.